there. Hi, welcome to Curious Collection. I'm Will. I'm Cinnamon. Today we want to talk about some very small items that work great for online reselling, specifically miniatures and miniature modeling. Mm -hmm. So that can apply to dollhouses, it can apply to trains, you know, there's a lot of different options, a lot of different stuff out there on the market, and it's everywhere. It's absolutely mm -hmm. everywhere. We see it uh, when we go to the auction houses, we see it at the flea markets, we see it garage sales, garage sales thrift stores. Yeah. Um, we've actually bought stuff and it's mixed in with jewelry or mm -hmm. children's toys. So, you know, we want to talk about this because these items are very easy to ship, typically weighing less than four ounces. We can fit them into a small uh, six by four by three box. Mm -hmm. The prices to ship them are, you know, less than $4 in most cases. So it really is an excellent item for us. Um, we've, we've been selling these on and off for the last four years regularly. Yeah. Um, and, and they're great because you can, you know, sometimes you can even buy multiple quantities. So today we actually sold four of these small uh, brass skateboards. And they're just tiny little two inch pieces. And, you know, we, we list them for $6. So there's not a lot of money. That's something simple. We can just throw it into a padded mailer. Right. But... When people buy multiple quantities and we offer free shipping, now it's $6 times four in this case. Mm -hmm. So our profit on that is going to be close to $15 for that lot today. Yeah, and that's not bad considering, like we talked about, you know, we like to ship smalls. We intentionally choose things that are small enough to fit in in because of our shipping cost, you know? So we like things that go in bubble mailers. We like things that go in those super small boxes. It keeps our shipping costs down. And then, you know, and then people will go and they'll, you know, they'll purchase it and, and we get to, to reap those benefits. Right, so some things to keep in mind is that you wanna note in the title and in the description what scale the item is. So, and then where you would apply it. So. Um, this item right here is just a little, uh, you know, little barrel with some, you know, some ice and, you and know, some beers. and some beers, you know, that right there is one twelfth scale. And we would put that in the dollhouse category mm -hmm. and it's, it's a different piece. It's probably homemade, but it looks like it's at professional quality. So those artisan made pieces, those can be pretty darn amazing as well. Um, we had an artisan piece that we sold that was a macaw. So it was a bird on the perch with a little like, you know, food dish. Um, and, and I think we ended up getting like $30 on that and it was artisan made. So it doesn't have to be new in package, although those work too. Um, but it can be those artisan made pieces or the, the, you know, older, um, manufactured pieces. We've sold those as well. Um, and, and have gotten pretty good money on like an old refrigerator and stove set. Um, so there's, there's lots of options when you see them out there that, that will sell. Right. So if you're not familiar with, with modeling or, you know, specifically doll houses or trains, you know, I encourage you to take a look, go on eBay, take a look and see what's sold out there. And, you know, we're looking at some of the stuff this morning and, you know, it's amazing to me the craftsmanship that these artists can put into a product. Absolutely. But the prices as a business owner are really what gets my attention. So, you know, there was a, a handmade sewing machine. It actually functions, it moves, and the person was able to get nearly $600 on a 112th scale sewing machine. Yeah. And that is one thing that, that we have found is that if it actually functions, people are much more engaged. So if it's a dresser, that's fine. But if it's a dresser that has drawers that open, now we're talking. So that might be something that you want to mention in the title as well is, you know, articulated or drawers open or, you know, spinning wheel spins. Um, you know, whatever it is that it does, mm -hmm. you want to include that in your title so that it gets more engagement. Right. Functioning, possibly. Mm -hmm. um, so talking about things that, that do stuff, that function, we've got a couple of little tiny 112th scale 
uh, lamps Tiffany here. Tiffany-style lamps. Now, are these not just absolutely gorgeous? Oh, look at that. That's so right. cool. And these actually plug in. Mm -hmm. On doll houses, they have an electrical system that they can install. And so the house will actually light up. So right. this, is, this is not your, you know, turn of the century, 1900 doll house. This is a modern mm -hmm. manufactured or artisan made doll house that they've, in, you know, installed all of these modern electronics. It's very interesting if you ever have the opportunity to see them functioning. Um, it really is. It, My sister does doll houses and some of the things that she is able to do is is pretty darn amazing um but it is a collectible market and you know there's facebook groups where people create you know doll houses and and they trade items back and forth but if you have you know those doll house items people sometimes will really pay up for them right we were at a thrift store I was walking down an aisle with some children's toys and they had two brand new and package pieces. One was a cast iron refrigerator with an articulating door. And the other was a, an old wood burning oven mm -hmm. that actually, you know, had an articulating door. I, I don't use it for cooking, but um, you know, we were able to get nearly $60 per piece yeah. on those sets. So, you know, again, absolutely amazing that the the values are there mm -hmm. if you can find the pieces and the pieces are nearly everywhere so like i said you definitely want to include the scale in the title if you're not mm -hmm. familiar with how to determine scale there are resources online all you have to do is measure the piece figure out what the original piece size would be approximately and that'll help you narrow down what the scale will be so mm -hmm. you know a 1 12th is one inch equals 12 inches Okay, so or one inch equals one foot. Right. So that's that's something to help, which is why we could tell just by looking at these pieces. There's also one twenty fourth, one forty eighth, one twenty one. You know, it and really all depends those on the modeling. Railroad scales, and mm -hmm. then you know now you're talking like O scale and you know N scale and things like that. I don't know those quite so much, um, but again, there's calculators online that you can just put in the the size, the dimensions that you've got, and it'll tell you what scale it's in. Mm -hmm. The O scale would be a 148th. So just for reference, um, you know, we've got a variety of stuff here in front of us that mm -hmm. we that we sell. And, you know, some of the stuff we've been lucky and we've stumbled across it in different, you know, resale shops and stuff. And so these are some brass skis. These are so a those, 112. Right. Those skateboards that we had sold were the same um, manufacturer, but these are some skis, some brass skis. And... Again, these are, are new in package. They're, they're new old stock. Um, so we really did luck into those. But again, it happens sometimes, you know, and, and if you know what you're looking at, then you can, you know, take advantage of those deals that come your way. Right. We've also done very well with model trains. And again, like the model train scales, um, all of the things that go into designing the entire layout for a train. So your houses, all of the different village pieces, the people, the cars, you know, the a lot of times they'll sell these as complete units or they'll sell them as individual pieces that, you know, in, the artists have to paint. Mm -hmm. So there's a market out there for very, you know, nearly everything within these categories. And you know, hardcore collectors will pay up if it's a if it's a piece that they're looking for to complete their collection. Absolutely, and I mean, again, you, it's they they do they have really really neat pieces like this right here is um, it's hard to show with the lights and stuff, but it's a little toolbox, right? But then it has these little hand painted tools that just fit right in there, you know. And, how cute is that? It is. It's just adorable. So, uh, you know, that's, you really don't know where they're going to come from. Um, you know, again, like he said, sometimes on my lots of jewelry, they're in there. Sometimes you look through, um, you know, toy bins and they're in there. Um, it, it's, it's hard to say where they're going to come from, but they are. They're very, very neat. Right. So another part of this category that we find is that the quality and the price 
it has a very dramatic range. Like I was talking about with, with regard to the sewing machine that was artisan made and it was pristine. It, it looked like it was a factory model mm -hmm. at nearly $600. They also make pieces that are that were manufactured in Hong Kong in the 60s and 70s, and they're very poor quality, but I wouldn't dismiss them at first glance. I would mm -hmm. definitely do my homework on them because some of those pieces are sought after. They are rare. Uh, even some of the pieces that Dollar Tree was selling even just 15 years ago, mm -hmm. we've found that, you know, are now selling, they were a dollar. Now they're selling for 15 to $20 a piece. Right. Because they don't make them anymore. And, you know, people want things that match their, their other pieces that are in their dollhouse, you know, or, or they, they're just not available at Dollar Tree anymore. So they, they still want something to go there. Right. So, you know, the, the other aspect of this is that you, you can always sell the train cars, you can sell train track, mm -hmm. you can sell the larger pieces as well. There is definitely a market online for that. It's something that we found that we tend away from. The cost of shipping can be prohibitive on these larger pieces. Right, right. But we have come across some train sets that we were able to, you know, acquire for relatively cheap because maybe they were missing a part. Uh, train controller itself might be $30, you know, if you can acquire the whole set for $30, it might not be worth putting a new controller in it, but you can sell those individual cars out of the out of that. Or you can sell right. the track as replacement pieces. Yeah, sometimes you can sell those tracks, uh, you know, as, uh, you know, like a three of the, um, the curves, you know, or an S-curve track or a straight track or, you know, find out whatever the term is for that particular piece of track. And yeah, sometimes you can part them out like that. Yeah. And then the other part is that, you know, we talked about all of the different furniture and different de decorative pieces that go into a dollhouse, but the actual flooring and mm -hmm. the wallpaper and the shingles and all Artwork. of the all of the components that go into these sets are sold separately as well. Mm -hmm. So they do make kits, and we've bought the kits and we've sold the kits at good profit, but you can also find just pieces of printed paper if you know what you're looking at you can recognize that's wallpaper that's right. you know that's exterior brick the that's balsa flooring. wood you know so that people can make their own um sometimes those just sheets of balsa wood and then they they use their cricket or what have you um to make their own patterns and things like that um bags of of moss you know sometimes we see that mm -hmm. or the um the the brick um, kind of like in the village, like Christmas village, sometimes there's those little brick road rolls. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that's something else that, that fits well into that category that sells. We've sold that before too. Right. So this is absolutely category perfect for a reseller, especially a reseller that's working out of a small space because all of the pieces are tiny. Yeah. You could store hundreds of pieces in a tote. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're working with the wallpaper and stuff, you could even store thousands of pieces of paper yeah. in a single tote. So I think it's a great category. Uh, you do need to have a discerning eye. So definitely do your research before you go heavy into this category. Like I said, there is a tremendous range mm -hmm. from from very low quality all the way up to, you know, really artisan made. So, you know, I, I wish you luck in this. If, mm -hmm. if you have interest in modeling and, and in, you know, toys in general this might be a good category for you. Right. Yeah. Again, if this is something that you think is is fun to do the research on and to, to find more information, just like with me and my jewelry or him with his, you know, ephemera, if this is something that, that maybe you, you can find some joy in, then, you know, that might be fun for you to be able to, to dive a little deeper and to get some depth into a category. And then you get those repeat buyers that are like, oh, yeah, I bought this piece from this person. And, you know, oh, their store's got a bunch of other little things that, that I might like to buy. And then, you know, they can do some quantity buying and, and it, it could be fun for you. Thank you so much for stopping in. Thanks. Like, subscribe, comment down below.